welcome everyone. We'll call the meeting to order and we'll welcome Jim Brown with us tonight. Uh, we'll start with the prayer, Pledge of Allegiance, and followed by the roll call. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for our blessings. Give us strength, courage, and clear vision as we use our gifts to serve you. We pray that you oversee the safety of our village employees and volunteers as they do their jobs. Bless our residents with safe neighborhoods, good jobs, and a great quality of life. We thank you for those people who are invested in the well-being of our community. We pray for protection of our military personnel and their families. And our thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of our residents that recently passed away. It is in your most blessed name I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Baker. Here. Barth. Here. Bassett. Here. Beverly. Here. Headley. Here. Jones. Here. I'd like to make a motion to um, amend the agenda tonight and add resolution 2017-24. I second that. Is it? It's one of it's to do with the grant dollars. money for oh. the hospital or for the park. Roll call, please. <laughs> hospital park. Jones. Yes. Bassett. Yes. Barth. Yes. Headley. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Baker. Yep. Okay. You have in your packet um, the October 2nd regular council meeting minutes. Does anyone have any questions or corrections? Make a motion to approve uh, the minutes. Oh, we got one. I'll let that go until we get to the other thing. No, <laughs> go ahead. I'll second. We have a motion by Eric and a second by Mike. Roll call, please. That's it. Yes. Jones? Yes. Barth? Yes. Headley? Yes. Baker? Yes. Beverly? Yes. <clears throat> okay. You had some bills, a list of bills in your packet, and also one on the table tonight. I would um, entertain a motion to approve them both together. Does anyone have any questions? I did. Uh, for refuse, uh, fuel tank pump hoses from Steitman Trucks. Also have the same thing similar to it from Jim Schmidt Ford. Mm -hmm. Refuse fuel tank pump hoses. It's kind of curious why we couldn't get them all from Schmidt's. Okay, give me a second to think here. This Steichman one are for the 93 dome. What page is the Schmidt one? It's on the back of the page on the bottom. Second from the bottom. Okay, he had the fuel tank and the hoses. They couldn't get the oil pan and some other stuff that we needed for that. So that's why we got the rest of the okay. What's and it on? For the, the 93 big dome. Any other questions? I don't know. Quick question. Um, police officer training for France. Do they have to... What was that for? And do they have to do so many credit hours a year and training? Well, you do have to have CPTs, continuing professional training. Right. You do have to have that. There's also additional training we try to pick up from time to time. Um, that particular one was on drug identification. Okay. I just didn't, I just didn't have so many hours in a year for every officer. You do. You yeah. do. And we try to get as much training as we can for the officers as cheaply as we can. Right, right. Okay. okay. Just to go back to that truck, I had made that PO of various, so that's why the line descriptions identical for both mm -hmm. also put an alternator on that truck that same truck yep. mm -hmm. I don't. $177.50 alternator what what vendor did that uh, go I didn't think that alder need. No, that's a different PO. That alder needer. 
I can't tell you right off which vehicle that was for, but it, that wasn't for the dome because it's a totally different PO number. The alternator for uh, for uh, fire unit 504, that one floored me, so I called the repair shop. Handy little piece of information he gave me is that it got a, a lease DeVille alternator, and you know what them cost, and uh, batteries, air conditioning hoses, so that made me feel a lot better about his bill. <clears throat> Anybody else have questions? Because I got a couple. Ranch motor sales, water department, a spark plug for $54. Couldn't get a spark plug at Napa? No, the, there again, the line items are not complete. They, there is a wiring issue yet on it. So it's like, if you want to call it service plus the spark plug. On a, on a what? The golf cart. And this is supposedly going to be it to get it, keep it running. Curly Nelson rolling over in his grave when he sees all them guys riding around on golf carts. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I moved to approve the bills if nobody has anything. <clears throat> I'll second. Roll call, please. Baker? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Barth? Abstain. Headley? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Jones? Yes. We have a notice of a public hearing in the packet. Um, there's going to be a hearing November 2nd at 5 p.m. in the zoning office at 108 North Main Street to discuss a lot split. The lot split um, affects locations at 223 West High Street and 225 West High Street. So if you have an interest in that lot split, just Please plan to attend the hearing on November Anybody 2nd. Anybody know what it, what it involves? Or why There's a picture it? on the back. I think they're just squaring up a property, it looks like. Hmm. Yeah, there's some, uh, there's one encroachment, and then you know, all they're doing that they want like high end, so they want to square up yeah. and stuff. Beyond that, you didn't have to ask Okay. There you go. Going on to boards and commissions, 6TV uh, has September 9th meeting minutes in the packet. Um, if you have any questions, Bill's back there. Mike's up here. Okay. We'll go on to council committee reports. I'll the fire. Oh, go ahead. I'll start. Uh, cemetery had one the 11th. There's no minutes in here. Just because I didn't put them in here. Everything's going as scheduled. There's no problem. <coughs> guys are doing a really good job. It so looks real nice out there. It does. Were you going to turn in some minutes? I can. Okay. It'll be short. It's or does someone fun. out there type them? I mean, if they do their minutes, I assume they keep minutes for their own records. <laughs> okay. We'll wait for yours I don't then. I think so. Okay. Uh, PFE. Uh, don't you seen the first item? Second item, uh, when they discussed uh, increasing the rates, uh, and we agreed to it. Uh, of course, also open to discussion for full council. And with the accounting firm, uh, the three members, uh, no, we're not changing that. Uh, they can take care of their own billing like it's already set up. They have time to do that. Uh, and it was uh, unanimous that that stays the same. I, the only thing I'd say about the changing in the billing, <clears throat> and I just don't recall off the top of my head, the contracts that we have with the other places were set up that where we bill their customers and whatever we collect, we reimburse them. And I don't remember if we put it at a specific rate that we billed them at or if we just said what our customary rate at a given time is, but that's something that we should look at if we're going to implement changes of our own, then otherwise you get a problem where we're billing our village, which isn't necessarily a problem other than it might be an accounting <coughs> issue. Mm -hmm. We're billing our own people one thing and, and it doesn't make much sense, and we're billing people in other 
townships that we're covering exactly. less than we're building our own residents. And as I stated, it, it's up for discussion with full council if, if anybody agrees or disagrees. Um, but I am assuming that you'll check that out for us and uh, come back next meeting and tell us what we're going to do. And with that, I thank you, and that's all I have. When would that increase take an effect? <clears throat> that wasn't really discussed, and, and Cody was going to do the steering on that. Uh, but there again, Troy has brought up a wonderful uh, point, so I guess we'll wait to hear what he has to say before we go any further with it. We will go next to the administrator's report. I've got something on finance. We're going to. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I didn't realize you're going on. Next Monday, the 23rd, we're going to meet at 2 o'clock. Go over the budget. Any department heads who want to come and state their case? Starting at 2. Okay. And then this isn't a committee report. There was some talk about lowering the load limits on some of the streets that were just paved. So I don't know if council wants to, the ordinance committee didn't meet on that, but is that something you want to do? I'm not, Troy, you commented on that. I sent Ken an email, he asked me about it, and what I basically said is that the, the law does allow the village in the interest of protecting their investment and their infrastructure in, to set limits uh, on the roads. The one thing you gotta be careful on is the ones that constitute state highways, they're set by revised code section, but on side roads, and particularly smaller side roads, um, in the interest of protecting those, we can set it, and it's a matter of, uh, you know, juggling it with the need for truck traffic and, you know, to promote commerce at, at various places. you got to kind of keep those in mind. The other thing that you want to avoid, I would say, is just picking a specific road or two and saying the limit on this road from here to here is so much, and uh, if you're going to do it, probably the way I would do it is say on all village roads that are not state highways or whatever, we're setting a limit at whatever, and there's various examples of that. And then you can exempt out certain things, which will sound hypocritical, but they all do it. They exempt like out government-owned vehicles, school buses, tankers. fire trucks, uh, propane or gas delivery. There's a, there's a whole list of them. I looked at about six or seven of them. They all read the same. They exempt out, you know, snow plows, you know, government-owned snow plows, things like that, are exempt out. But um, there's certainly guidelines. Well, it came to light because South Main's being used right. a lot for Jericho. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Say, so, so do we want to lower the whole town, or just off the top of my head, thinking where you could run a truck in this town and where our trucks run, <clears throat> Miss Argon, heavily truck traffic can't restrict that that's that's our industry out there you got to let them run mm -hmm. right and uh, other than that the rest of it except for Main Street itself that's trucks are on the state highways I mean we don't run them around the back way anymore because of the viaducts so you got, you got somebody's delivered to the hospital oh yeah mm -hmm. but and just to me, I don't like the exemption uh, you, would, you would kill the milk factory or the cheese factory because every tanker that pulls in there uh, overweight. is overweight. So it sounds like everybody wants to sled along. I know, for example, this weekend we had downtown closed. You know, they were shooting down Maple, yep. down Smith, and then back up Main, I think, to go around the downtown area. And Trucks weren't supposed to, but I'm sure they were. Oh, yeah. yeah you can. Okay, I just thought I'd bring it to full council and see what your wishes. So it sounds like it's leave alone. Okay. That's all I got. Any other committee reports? Okay. Administrator's report. Just a couple of things. One of them's mainly get out to the public. Uh, start with a small one first. Austin Z. Dyke did pass his uh, class one exam back on the 11th. He didn't take the EPA exam down in Columbus. He took it over in Fort Wayne. So they've got to get his eBiz account finalized with the EPA and then they'll take a look at things and eventually send a certificate but he did pass the test because he got those results already um, so he'll be a 
class one. I mean, he technically is now, but until he gets a certificate, he's still in limbo. Uh, trash service. I was hoping by today residents were getting some letters from Whirler, but I didn't get anything in my mail. But they're going to be mailing out notices to people, letting them know what's up with the new trash service, which is starting December 6th. And Don's going to have a blurb on the water bills in that one little box explaining it. The website has information. And then when the November bills get mailed out, there'll be another uh, information stuffer in with that one, just getting people ready for that switch over. Um, <coughs> The explanation, if people read it, it's pretty cut and dried. <coughs> Not a whole lot of room to be confused, but anyway. So they're getting advance notice. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some confused purposely, but anyway. Uh, carts are coming the 28th and 29th of October, and they're going to be coded. So if, well, Troy doesn't live in town, but whatever gets dropped at his house is going to have a barcode of some sort. So, you know, that's Troy Essex's. So if it ends up over at Cheryl Smith's house, they'll know something screwy. Uh, or it gets lost, they'll know who to bill. But all this stuff will be spelled out. Trash will be for overall town on Wednesdays. There won't be any more Tuesday trash route. They're going to do a north and south with two trucks, everybody on Wednesdays. Recycling will be every other week. One week it'll be north, one week it'll be south. And as of this moment, I don't know which side starters but anyway that'll be every other week and any questions and complaints or whatever that come up during the course of this go straight to Whirler. The village has got nothing to do with that all we're doing is the billing. So hopefully if people get a letter from Whirler they open it up and read it. When they get the water bill hopefully they read that anyway and then when they get the stuffer in the November bill hopefully they'll read that. So. They're going to be contacted, so hopefully people will take some time and read up on it. And the last issue, there's some sheets in there. I was originally just going to give this to finance, but I figured out I might as well just give it to all of council. Uh, just explaining in a nutshell where the funding comes from for some of the different departments. I know there's been some concern about general fund and trying to finance some things, so I didn't get shot down by Cheryl or the mayor as far as I got incorrect info on how these different departments get funded and the only thing on the trash part um, finance committee might really have to look at that after next year to make sure that funds not getting totally wiped out and the only thing on that back page where it shows if I switched funds all into all these other departments they forgot to print it out of the color <laughs> So the column on the left is 20, 2018 proposed budget. The column on the right would be if I'd add the 81,000 plus into all of those, which I, I don't think makes any sense at all, but I thought I'd give you the numbers. Um, so I said, yeah, that way all the council's got it to, to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, because the services that get paid out of refuge funds are still going to be provided. You just going to need to know where we're going to make up that shortfall in funding. It can't all go to the street department. It's impossible. Um, I think there's enough in the refuge fund at least for a year to get by, but something Cheryl and Zoom are going to have to watch. I appreciate you putting this in the packet for all of council to see. If anybody wants to yell at me, or whatever it is, might be your last chance. Sorry for the time. We have your number, Ken. <laughs> I'm going to be in the audience for the next few after he's up and running. Because there will be some carryover stuff. You won't always know the answers. So I'll come for a while. Still is. Everything that's decided or done is. We appreciate he that. Thank you. <laughs> so hurry up and get trained. Ignorance is bliss. I got a question, Ken, on Haver Drive lights. Now, we're, not we're when they're going to put in, but we still get charged when the lights aren't there, right? You that know. girl still never got back to me. Because we get oh. charged per light, right? For the uh, whole town. Uh, yeah, I think it's 
Put so we should be charged, charged the whole amount for what nine months, ten months, nine months. I'll keep bugging her, but no, I, I've after what? every time you ask, I get her another message. Who are you? Who are you calling? I can't tell your name right off. I'd have to go. I pull mean, what off file. She's our street light account oh. person, so I figured she'd be the one to go through. What's the county auditor? No, I'm no, no. With AEP. He's okay. talking what AEP bills us for a street light charge per light. Okay. So there's what? 20 lights out there that we should be not getting charged for. <coughs> All right. I see. I see. I was thinking more on the residential side of things. Or the you had an update on all the construction going on, like I said, the main street, water line starting today. Um, I know uh, Underground Utilities is at Haver, kind of do, they started there. Yeah, I'll start out on Haver and work our way in. I doubt very much that they're going to be able to redo any of those swales because they're holding water. Because I did have a couple people call. I do you think it's too wet? So those might end up being a wait and come back in the spring deal. They should have been able to get all the signs up. Some of the minor grading around, I think there was two manholes. They had a mailbox to reset. The shed hadn't been moved at whatever time you and I were out there. That kind of stuff ought to get done. That huge pile of stone over on LaBar's basically gone. disappeared, which I was shocked. I don't know where they hauled that. I thought we were getting it. But I don't care as long as it's gone. So some of the major grading work might not get done just because it's been so wet, but we'll we'll see. Keep working on it. Uh, North Main, I know they brought a bunch of stuff in. They didn't start digging. I think now, and maybe Ron will know more because he was out there today. I think they're going to wait and bore last, if I'm understanding right. They're going to they're start at the cemetery and come this way because okay. the Riley the Bore Company can't make it till next week. Okay, well that might work because CSX. They're dragging their feet. Well, they got us what our bill might be, but they were still trying to arrange an observer. So that probably works out just as well. So they'll be starting out the cemetery working towards the viaduct. Uh, so at some point, probably after Jim takes over, you'll get about a $6,000 CSX bill. So just be prepared. <laughs> uh, the town, the loop around, call it Main Beach, Brian. All the main paving's done. I think they've got a little bit of touch up to do. They were working on putting the cement rings around the manholes today. I don't know if they got them all caught up yet or not. They're gonna have a bunch of berm work and some other restoration work. Some of the yard work, I've got a hunch they'll put back, but they'll have to come back in the spring because it's too late to start seeding. So they've got some cleanup stuff and then that should be finishing off. Uh, I think the roads look great. Oh, East Cornelia. They've got storm sewer in. They were hooking up catch basins today. Uh, we don't know they ran out of something at the end of the day. But anyway, they're almost done with that part. Then they'll come in and do the compaction to make sure it passes that test. Then they'll do the manual test and all of that. The liner company was supposed to start today. I don't think they ended up coming in. But they should be a quick in and out. So that one should get wrapped up here shortly. Are we ready for the liner <coughs> company there then? Yeah, they probably could have started today. Okay. And I don't know if the rain had anything to do with him holding off. Because okay. that sanitary section did get replaced. That they were they had to wait to do that before they come into line. Um, I think that's it as far as tearing stuff up at the moment. Is that a burst in line or just a liner? There is a line in it. Um, loop's gonna be in, I got some spot paving. Nobody stopped in today to get their map, but they said they were coming today to start the prep work. So I'm assuming at some point this week, there's a bunch of little patches that will get caught up. And that's... Are you gonna fix that at the end of Maine where we should've went another 10 feet? That was going to be on our walkthrough with Noggles. I don't know why they didn't just go ahead and touch yeah. that up because their vehicles were the ones that kind of made that worse. But we're having a walkthrough Friday on that. And I know they're going to have um, a couple cement spots they got to come back and look at. And I said, see what they get done this week if 
if they come back and do any kind of asphalt or not, I think there's a spot or two that they might need to touch up, but we'll take a look at that. Because I was surprised today when Jim and I drove down that way. But yeah, it's like from maybe me to you at the most. I thought, why didn't he just go that little bit farther and catch it? Common sense. So, we get any bids on the restroom? Not yet. That bid opening's Thursday. Come on, start. I've had three people inquire about it, but as of today, unless they got something to share, well, we've not gotten anything. No. So we'll find out. Any other questions for Ken? Thanks, Ken. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the administrator's report? Again. Solicitor again. I did that. I just checked you off again. And I was even thinking about the meeting two weeks ago when I did that. No, we'll take the solicitor's report. Sorry. First thing I have is ordinance 2017-17, second reading by caption only. An ordinance adopting chapter 923 of the codified ordinances regarding maintaining drainage swales and ditches, tampering with drainage swales and ditches, and describing a penalty for violations of said regulations. Next is 2000, ordinance 2017-18, a first reading by caption only, an ordinance to authorize the mayor to join a coalition of municipalities retaining special counsel for purposes of initiating litigation to challenge the constitutionality of amendments to chapter 718 of the Ohio Revised Code related to municipal income tax and declaring an emergency. This is what we talked about last time, the thousand plus thousand. I thought we all decided no. Well, we thought we decided yes. Mm -hmm. The vote was, was yes. It? It yeah. was, the majority was yes. Majority it was. was. Yeah. Oh, Except the one we had to spend a little money. Thousand. Yeah. Thousand. Yeah. yeah. And he said it was a 50 50 shot that yeah. you'd get anything. And if you, if the thing goes through, you're going to get it anyhow, whether you paid the thousand or not. I know Mike was on with me on that. And I thought the rest of you were Four too. Two. Yeah, it was Four to two. I move we suspend the rules. <coughs> Second? I'll second that. Okay. Roll call, please. <coughs> Baker? Yes. Barth? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Beverly? Nope. Headley? No. Jones? Yes. Well, we can't suspend the rules on so that's just a first reading. Next is Ordinance 2017 19, a first reading by caption only, an ordinance to amend the annual appropriations ordinance. You got any questions, C. Cheryl? <laughs> And then last is resolution 2017-24, first reading by caption only, a resolution authorizing the mayor of the village of Hicksville to execute an agreement with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources for a community recreation grant for construction of restroom facilities in the Hicksville Park. And it actually should say in declaring an emergency. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. the last one, we need yeah. to suspend the 24, also. yeah. Yes, yeah. so that yeah. goes back to the state budgeted money. So we still had to turn around and do basically a grant application and all that stuff to get it, even though we got it. I move we suspend the rules. So this will be the last piece Sorry. we need. Roll call, please. For the second. Mommy. Godly. <clears throat> Asset. Yes. Barth. Yes. Baker. Yep. Jones. Yes. Headley. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Second and third reading to the resolution 2017-24 by caption only, a resolution authorizing the mayor of the village of Hicksville to execute an agreement with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources for a community recreation grant for construction of restroom facilities in the Hicksville Park and declaring an emergency. So move. Second. Eric thinks we should take one of those zeros <coughs> off of that. Yeah, you're right. Um. <laughs> Would be the person asked. Okay. I've tried. $50,000. No, no, no. <laughs> On the res ordinance 2017 19, do we need to pass that as an emergency? For Cheryl. Sure. I don't know. Oh, do we do that now? I thought do we, we need an emergency for that? I don't need an emergency, but. Yeah. I just. Oh, on the back, it's an assignment, an emergency. <clears throat> so, do you need it? It's not an emergency. It's not an emergency. Okay. Know, it seems so simple. I know it seems simple, but all right. It just said there it was an emergency. Oh, yeah. 
And remember, you can always, even if something's not an emergency, you can always suspend the rules, which is the three reading rule, but doesn't make it an emergency. Right. So if there's something you want to pass right away, but you still, it's not an emergency measure, and it's still subject to referendum and all that stuff. So we don't okay, sure. That. Yeah. Okay. Maybe next meeting we can just get that finished up and then right. she can get her book straightened out before okay. it's getting here at the year end. So roll call please from the last first and second that you had. Bassett? Yes. Jones? Yes. Headley? Yes. Barth? Yes. Baker? Yep. Beverly? Yes. That's all I have this evening. Okay. We'll go on to the department heads. Police chief? Uh, just to bring you guys up to a little bit on a couple things that have happened. One, no buildings have come down since our last meeting, so we're good there. Um, we did assist the man unit in serving a search warrant looking for drugs. It was very successful. There were over 30 marijuana plants taken out of the place, including some methamphetamine and some other drugs. That happened about two weeks ago and at the end of the week. And then last week, we were assisted by the Defiance County Sheriff's Office in providing our assistance to the Federal Marshal Service in picking up a fugitive that had been trying to stay in our town. So those were handled very successfully on both of those. Um, I do want to uh, present to you our candidate for the full-time position that we had talked about hiring. Um, he's here tonight, Steve, Steven Stosa. I'm sorry, Stos. <laughs> Uh, we've got him, uh, we're presenting him for a, a full-time position with the, with the uh, police department and we need your vote um, to have him be hired. Okay. So I'd like to do that at this time. Did you say Stowe's was the last Stowe's. 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 Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I will make a recommendation that we hire Steve Stowe's for the police department as yes. a patrolman. Which one? Which position are you patrolman with? The entry level, whichever that okay. is. Okay, all righty. And that would be, of course, pending pending the uh, physical and drug screen. And that background drug. check. and Yes. I would turn the mayor's motion into a recommendation that we hire Steve Stotes or Stotes? Stotes. Stotes, Stotes. Stotes. okay. I'll second by Do you have any years of service in anywhere? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, but they've been part-time, and uh, I've been a police officer for a little over five years. Uh, but like I said, my experience has been part-time at the uh, Rockford Police Department, Stuntsville Police Department, uh, Mercer County Sheriff's Office Reserves, Van Wert County Sheriff's Office Reserves, and then I also do have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Red State. So you plan on moving here? Yes. Yeah. Good for you. What are yours? Good for us. Yeah. yeah, there you go. No, it's good for us, but it's good for him. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Being involved in the community makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yep. So do we have a first and a second? Mm -hmm. All right, roll call please. Baker? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Barth? Yes. Headley? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Jones? Yes. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And Welcome. thank you very much. And then we also have two candidates for part-time. Um, Damien Esparza and Mike Cropcho. neither of them could make it to tonight's meeting. We'll get them in to a meeting as soon as possible to meet you. Um, if they're hired, if you vote to hire them. Um, both of them have part-time experience. Uh, Mike is working full-time at St. Rita's uh, Medical Center as a police officer, and Damian uh, Esparza is working part-time currently at Antwerp PD and has, has worked uh, several other places part-time. Did you say Damian Esparza? Damian Esparza. Esparza. Yes. Esparza. Okay. Yeah, E-S-P-A-R-Z-A. Okay. Is he the one that I heard is fluent in other languages? Actually, that would be Stephen. That guy right there? Yeah. I, I wouldn't say fluent, but I, I have six years of Spanish. Okay. Yes. Very helpful. And what was Mike's last name? Mike Cropcho. C-R-O-P-C-H-O. All right. <laughs> oh, I hope I can pronounce them after I even <laughs> So I would make a recommendation that Damian Esparza and Mike Cropcho be hired as part-time officers with the Hicksville Police Department pending a good drug screen, physical, and background check. Yes. Again, I would turn the mayor's recommendation into a motion that we hire Damian and Mike. A second. Roll call, please. Bassett? Yes. Jones? Yes. Barth? Yes. Headley? Yes. Baker? Yes. Everly? Yes. And thank you very much on behalf of those gentlemen and on our department's behalf as well. Do you guys have any questions for me? Thank you for your time in, in finding some good candidates. 
you know, how many hours do you think the part time that you might use them? That is totally dependent on what happens with the with the full time officers. Really, we don't use part time on a regular basis. So just a fill in. It's a fill in, generally speaking. But at first, there will be some time they need to come in, and we need to get them trained up and, and oriented to how we do things. So, what does that take your staff up to, number wise? Uh, full time eight. Um, part time is going to be uh, depending on whether or not we keep a couple of them that we have now. It'll be about fourteen, with total with the part time. We can't get rid of him. The department will crumble if we get rid of him. <laughs> He's a training officer. <laughs> Any other questions for Love the chief? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we will go on to the fire chief who's not here, but it looks like we have Bruce Hart here. Um, we'd like to thank the women for having their barbecue or their sausage and pancake Saturday. Thank for council and visiting them and the village of Hicksville supporting them. Also, uh, Scott and I would like to thank the PFE committee for understanding the for the aerial that we purchased we're going to have about four months of intensive training on it <coughs> and as soon as that happens it's going to roll it'll be going up and down the streets with us um, there's not much mechanical we'll have to do with it and we'll see what happens so does the council have any questions on that I'm going to open the open the Pandora's box. <laughs> no, but thanks for your department and the ladies all enjoy for everything that you do for Hicksville. You know, we uh, you don't run without a good police department, fire department, and EMS department. That's for sure. Do you know how many they served Saturday? Because there was a large crowd there. <clears throat> I didn't talk to Tylene on that. It was very nice. Yeah, very good too. Also, our open house went very well also. We had a lot of people there. Do you have well, a lot of fire truck rides? Um, <laughs> I bet we did. <laughs> Probably 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see a few signs around town for the levy. Yeah. Any other plans? Um, as of right now, I think we're going to just probably put a couple ads in the paper right now. Other than that. As, as aggressive as your auxiliary works, uh, you guys should sweet talk them into doing a little door-to-door -door campaign. Yeah, they would do it. I mean, I they, they would, they would, it. they would get the job done and for I, us. And I think that it would be very, very beneficial to you. Yeah. But. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, bring that up to Tylene, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Bruce? Thanks for coming tonight. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Okay, EMS chief, is Cody here? Oh, Bob's here. Yeah. Welcome, Bob. Got the fill in. All right. Um, he wanted me to uh, tell you the uh, Christmas for kids. Uh, the apps are going to start November 1st. Their deadline is going to be December 2nd. And then the distribution of the uh, stuff will be December 18th. So I don't know if you have those dates or not, but we wanted to get those dates out to you. November 1st, the apps are ready. December 2nd is the deadline. Ooh, and correct. December 18th is the distribution. Yes. All right. And if anybody has questions, as people usually do, call me and find out. Yeah. Is it too late to get my app in? <laughs> do I just tell them to call your department, or what do I do? Yeah, they can probably call over to Cody if it's, if it's past that deadline but yeah they probably need to get it in one All time right. so that they have and where are the applications going to be at bob um he didn't say anything about that but i imagine they'll probably get them distributed uh to some different places okay i know we always have them out on the front a counter oh, we're out there yeah and then i think sometimes there's some that go to the schools and stuff okay. so they'll have but i don't think i don't know if they're doing as much radio advertisement on this they said they're starting to cut back on some of their radio advertisements okay. for some of this stuff. Um, they won't be doing as many portable movements around. And I assume that you're going to have the big barrels out around town where people can drop 
yes. uh, Christmas gifts yes, off I know also. And, and the uh, cans as well. This, I knew the small cans came okay. in the office for the year, too. Okay. And there's usually a little house on the front porch, I think, for people to put their... Sitting upstairs just waiting to come Okay. Out. It'll be out on the front porch. Yeah. If people want to make monetary donations to Christmas for kids, how do they do that? Just drop it off they here, drop and we'll get it to you. The village here, yeah. Where okay. Somebody would be. Again, if they bring them over to the fire hall. If they can get in, we'll always accept them. But okay. Back door. Usually. Okay. So All right. To Don or Cheryl would be a wonderful thing. Yep, that would be fine. Thanks, Bobby. All right. Did anybody have any questions for him? Good. Nope. All righty. So then I see we have our park director here, Val Shaw. Do you have anything to report? I just wanted to announce that I got a phone call from uh, Tim Robinson from Columbus, and he informed me that our Nature Works grant we were awarded $8,000. Great. Every little bit helps. Yep. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for Val and the park? About the park? Everything Thank you. Good. It looks very nice. Already right, shut down? No, we got another one. <laughs> got leaves. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. You got something about your keys. So we will go on to the fiscal officer's report. Um, it's kind of short this time. You have your cash report starting out for the month of October. The September Police Department and Mayor's Court report their collections. And a reminder to all the department heads that open enrollment's November 2nd. Everybody needs to be there because we have a bunch of changes to our benefits. That's all I have. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Cheryl? Thank you. What's that? Okay. Alrighty. So I have a few notes here. I'll just say first. Um, I think the council should have all got an invitation from the Defiance County CIC that invited you to the Thursday, November 2nd um, Investors Appreciation Reception. So if you didn't, um, I have one here, I guess, for everybody. And just a plug for Trinity United Methodist Church, they're having a soup sale. Um, they are taking orders. There's an order form here at City Hall. Three kinds of soups, chili, chicken noodle, beef and noodle, veg vegetable beef, sorry. And they're selling it by the court, and it will be picked up on November 11th or November 12th. So if you'd like to support that, um, there is information here at City Hall. I'd like to congratulate Austin on passing his test also. It's great that we have people that want to um, take those classes and benefit us. Uh, last week, when our last council meeting, when I got the news that Brock Evans resigned from the fire department, I just wanted to make sure that we gave him a special thank you for his service uh, to the community on the fire department. We're sorry to lose him. Gordon Creek Granite um, is, is inviting the public to their grand opening on November 28th, 9 to 2. Or excuse me, November, what, or October. <laughs> October, I, I'm having a really bad. October 28th from 9 to 2, public uh, grand opening. Um, I think you each got something scanned to you. And then... I need to have a nuisance board meeting that entails, that includes um, Ron Beverly, Mike Bailey, Scott Kramer, and myself um, to work on a property in town for probable demolition. And when would you like that, Mayor? Well, <coughs> Scott's on vacation right now, so maybe next week. I'll wait till he comes back and see when he's available. He's probably going to have a lot of catching up to do. And then I got a letter from the Campbell Soup Company inviting. It says, the Campbell Soup Supply Company would like to uh, thank you and extend an invitation to shop at their employee store during the month of November 7th. This will be to 
open to all veterans in Defiance County, veterans only in Defiance County, invited to shop at their employee store. Um, their normal hours of operation are on this form. And uh, this information will also be at City Hall. We want all veterans to be able to take advantage of that if they would like to. And Ron Jones, I think I had your name on this. It's an event for the Senior Center. No, I'm a senior now. <laughs> I can't go. Okay. I can't go, so I'm passing it on to you. It's a, a senior center, a veterans event at the Defiance Senior Center. Okay. And um, so I think that's all my notes I brought in with me. Kent, um, I, I really have appreciated your service to the village, and I know you don't like accol accolades, but. When I was fiscal officer, you made my job so much better than it could have been just by your organization and record keeping and and keeping me informed and copying me on your email so I knew it was going on with construction projects and everything and, and that's extremely helpful for me today, these days too, but you're gonna be missed. You've done a great job. You've gotten a lot done in the community and I personally appreciate all the service that you've done to the village of Hicksville. Thank you. Thank you. Man. Yeah. I think we're the new tree guy. Come up and take care of it. That's a great idea. Give him a tree. Yeah. I appreciate that. I think like your I'll wife said, you're <clears throat> just a little doll baby. <laughs> I ought to think about that. <laughs> but I also think I told the mayor I didn't want anything at all. I just wanted to fade away. There you go. <laughs> but no, I do until the party's over that. to talk about that. No, so thank you for that. What I forgot to mention in my part, because uh, you all know we had to do that emergency income survey on West Cornelia and the 100 block of West Arthur. And I'll commend the residents on that street for coming through with a 100% response. But, uh, Eric and the mayor and Ron Jones went door to door, and they got 26 out of the 33 that we needed that didn't respond by mail. So we had the 100% that we needed to keep that grant to get their streets paved. Great. So, and thank, I, you thank, thank you for doing that. For for doing that. I really. The residents responded. That I really appreciate the residents answering their door. And we had some good conversations while we were doing that too. So it was, yeah. and thank you, Eric and Ron. That was, I'm so happy. Team effort. Yeah. yeah. They were very, very responsive. And like I said, I was just glad they entered their door because you know, you feel like a solicitor or <laughs> trying to sell them something when you knock on the door. And sometimes you know people are home. <laughs> So, thank you. Cold is terrible. Mm -hmm. well, anything else from anybody? Uh, real quick, add something. The um, Chamber of Commerce Oktoberfest, that was this last Saturday. Um, downtown activities, um, they worked hard. We had a lot of um, booths. I think they were sitting about 19 businesses that were on the street with different organizations. Some of the businesses downtown participated in it with food and open houses. But uh, talked to a couple, they thought it was a good turnout on their end. Uh, Rotary was participating. I know H&W helped with some things. A lot of kids did the pumpkin painting and, and had fun and the horse-drawn wagon rides. And uh, I wanted to thank everybody who participated and the residents who came up and had a good time. And I think The activities was just a great variety of things for kids and adults. And um, I even got a call from the Paulding mayor calling me. Uh, said he was uptown. Sure, it was nice. Um, just a couple hours there Saturday afternoon, and uh, one of these played. So, it's a nice downtown event. Hopefully, mm -hmm. they can. Very do nice. Again. Thank you for everyone involved. Thanks, Mike. Yep. I would like to go back to the committee reports. Cheryl Miller does do our minutes. She does an awesome job. Okay. Yep. Cemetery. So you can just use those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she takes good care of yeah. all of us. Um, and also, I've been thinking about the weight limit on the roads. I think we should have a meeting and see what they are, what are the legal limits and rules and regulations to that. Set by state code? 
Mm -hmm. And how do we know what the weight limits are? In the book. All of them are posted. On the, not on the streets. Yeah, we, there's still a couple, and these these are back, I think even when I was a little kid, that one stretch of bun on, I think maybe rock, they've got a seven and a half ton yeah. limit. Mm -hmm. How those ever came to be, I can't tell you because they've been around forever. What about the main one out here where we're, we're paving, the, you said the bricks mm -hmm. underneath? What's the limit on that? Does anybody? Well, the, we don't have a limit on that street. And if it's not marked, it's 80,000. 80,000? 80, 80,000 on five axles. And the asphalt's an inch and a half thick. I read that. And so. All the further we could go. Yeah. But how, where are you going to route them? How are you going to? Because there's a lot of traffic. You, unless you want to destroy the. Everybody hates trucks. Everybody hates to see trucks going down these side streets. And I love trucks because the more trucks there are in this town, the more commerce we have. So let's leave the trucks alone because truckers talk. And pretty soon you, you got guys that are turning down dispatch going, I'm not going to Hicksville. We don't have a problem. We don't, our roads aren't, our roads are good. Uh, we don't have a problem, so. I leave it alone. They know where they can go because they can get there where they can't because of the turns. Sure. So some days we have 10 semis. I imagine some like Parker have 20 or 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was thinking out this way since this is newly paved, though. I mean, I don't, I'm not interested in changing them. I, I just don't like the exception part. I mean, you have the hospital has somebody's going to it on side roads. You have Napa cool. loading on side roads on North Maple Street. I mean, you have the, the dairy cheese place, right, cheese right. place. I mean, it's, uh, how do you, how, I mean, Every if you make day. them all uniform throughout town, uh, that'd be one thing, but I don't think it's, you I think know. You could. Then you have exceptions for school buses and gas delivery and all that stuff. and kind of hard for the police department to monitor every single vehicle that's going down through there and we don't have a scale system to weigh them or anything else. I mean, I think. Yeah, I don't know how many times that I've had just a truck that didn't know where they were going. It might have been a language barrier or whatever, but you got to help these guys and get them around town. You know, and like Ron said, you know, you, I'd hate to, I don't know what the percentage would be, but a lot of stuff okay. comes to Hicksville on trucks. There's just no end to it. I think you've had a lot of road construction, so that's why the semis are a lot of places where they're not <coughs> normally. But as long as your road construction is done, and they're on their main route, you don't notice them. Yeah, the only time the police department takes action on is if we complain, but usually what it will be is if a trucker pulls down, you know, turns the wrong way by mistake, we'll try to do our best we can to get them back yeah. where they're supposed to be. The only time we do anything as far as a citation goes is if they're tearing up somebody's yard when they obviously are knowing what they're doing is wrong, then we will do something about it. We will cite them. But other than that, we just try to get them back on their way. I see where somebody slid a semi-trailer up through the Legion yard and, and into the, but I know who that was. Yeah. Sounds like you're kind of outnumbered. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just remember the email that he sent, you know, we're paying. How much to repave that? You're going to have them rip it up again, and you're going to repave well, it again. Why will they rip it up? Because it's so thin on the bricks. That's an Isn't there out. already That's damage, Kent? Mm -hmm. Did you say there's already damage on it since it was paved? No, you're going to find some tire tracks through it from people that have no clue how to drive. Mm -hmm. They didn't wait till it cooled. That would drive through hot asphalt. Yeah. Heck, I've seen them drive through cement. <laughs> they drove through it as soon as, he, as, soon as they got it. Out of the back of the paper, they drove it up on High Street. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to say anything tonight? Well, thank you for coming. It's always nice to have some community members come and listen. So I'll make a motion to adjourn that. I'll second. Roll call, please. Baker. Yep. Barth. Yes. Bassett. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Headley. Yes. Jones. Yes.